Hello again. So, I'm talking about miniatures again in this bonus video, as I, I do get asked from time to time about what's the best kind of monster miniatures to buy first. You know, if you're just starting out with this kind of thing. And it's a bit of a difficult question to answer really, as I, I don't think there's a definitive answer, and it's going to depend on the kind of game that you're looking to run, but uh, I am going to do my best and try and answer the question anyway, though that does mean making a few basic assumptions. And the first of these being that you're not looking to spend a ton of cash. So, with that in mind, I've set myself a budget of around £20. I think it's also a good idea if the models themselves are easy for most people to get a hold of, so I'll be using the Reaper Bones range, as I think they're going to be a good choice for this. And finally, I'm going to assume that you just want a selection of generic fantasy monsters. You know, nothing too weird. Um, the kind of thing you'll get the most use out of if you're running a fairly standard fantasy RPG. So, with that in mind, the first thing I'd recommend are some goblins, or kobolds, or, or something like that. Um, as I say, I am using the Reaper Bones range for these examples, and they do have a few different styles to choose from, but I've gone with these. And the reason for that is that they're some of the older models, which means they're cheaper, and, uh, and also because they're a nice size. I mean, they'll obviously work well as goblins, seeing as that's what they are, but uh, you could also use them as placeholder kobolds, maybe even proxy them as hobgoblins, or just good old-fashioned human bandits. Basically, they can represent anything humanoid in the small or medium size category. Because, to begin with, you really can't afford to be too fussy about getting the exact model to the table. Just something that's roughly the right size, and roughly the right shape, that will do. And, uh, and these can fulfil that role. Okay, the next thing I would get hold of are a few undead. And, again, that could mean skeletons, zombies, ghouls, and so on. But, if you're new to painting, I'd always recommend getting a few skeletons first. And, try to get ones that don't have too much equipment, if you can. Um, just a skeleton, holding a weapon, that's a good choice. Like this one here. And that's because skeletons, they are a good miniature to practice on. Just by painting them all the basic colours first, applying a wash over the top, and then a final bit of dry brushing, that's all you really need to get them looking good enough for the table. And, uh, and that's why I also recommend getting ones with very little equipment. It just makes them quicker to paint. Okay, next on the list is some kind of dungeon vermin. So, rats, bugs, snakes, anything along those lines. And I've actually gone with these giant rats. Mainly because you get six of them in a pack, and uh, the more models we can get for our £20, the better. And, like I say, these can get used for any kind of vermin that the players stumble across in the dungeon, or even animals out in the wild. I mean, they're a bit small, but they could also stand in for a pack of wolves if you really need them to, or any kind of summoned creature or familiar. Um, like I say, don't stress too much about getting the exact model for every single encounter. At least not to begin with. Right then, it's probably also worth getting your hands on some kind of large creature as well. So, a troll, an ogre, that kind of thing. And the one I'm going to recommend is this one, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's one of the cheaper ones, but it's also a nice size, as I personally hate painting large models. Plus, as you can see, it's a nice looking model. I mean, it obviously works well as a troll or ogre, but it doesn't take too much imagination to, to also see it as a bugbear, or even a particularly large and brutish orc. So, uh, that's the reasoning behind this one. And if you're ordering these models online, everything so far comes to nearly £17 in total, depending on where you get them from. So, the remainder of our money is likely to be going on postage and packaging, I'm afraid. However, if you're actually buying these in person, in your local game store, for example, you could probably squeeze in one more model and still keep to the roughly £20 budget. And for this, you might like to go with something a bit weird or wacky, as everything we have so far is a bit stereotypical, to be honest, so uh, maybe some kind of aberration or monstrosity, that might be a good addition, um, just to spice things up a bit. Alternatively, you could go with something like this, which is what I've done. And the idea here is that, as well as being used for various elemental creatures, it could maybe be used for ghosts, spirits, and things like that, 
possibly even spell effects. Like if you need to keep track of the position of a flaming sphere spell, for example. Or some kind of illusion. Plus, you don't even need to paint it. So yeah, I, I don't know how useful this video is going to be, but here's all of those same models with a quick paint job. And, uh, and yeah, I think that's a reasonably good way to get started. I mean, we have some vermin, some humanoids, a few undead, a large creature, and something a bit weird. Plus, we've also got models which we can use to represent everything from the tiny size category right up to a large sized creature, which I think is a good thing to have as well. But uh, yeah, is there anything that you think I've missed or anything that you'd replace if you were doing something similar yourself? Um, as I say, the aim here was to try and get a kind of generic starter set almost, um, just to try and answer the what should I buy first question that, uh, that does crop up from time to time. Anyway, I, I know this isn't my usual kind of content. Um, if you're new here, I usually concentrate on terrain, some of which you can see on the screen now. But uh, if you have got this far, then thanks for sticking with it to the end, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.